So you're all very welcome to this uh, webinar about the Fulbright Creative Ireland Museum Fellowships. My name is Emma Lockney and I'm the Communications Manor with, Manager with the Fulbright Commission in Ireland. So I'm going to take you through um, the process of applying to these museum fellowships. Um, we're hosting a webinar specifically for these ones because they do have some extra rules um, that are outside our kind of usual student um, um, instructions. So I just wanted to run through them with you to make sure everyone's clear on those. We will be recording the webinar so people can um, listen back. We'll have it up on YouTube and I'll send it to all of you who've registered as well. So um, the Creative Ireland Museum Fellowships, we have uh, three of them this year. The first one is to the Exploratorium in San Francisco. The second is to the Harry Ransom Center in Austin, Texas. And then we have one to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. So for all of the Fulbright Irish Awards, the Fulbright Award offers a monetary award, visa administration, accident and emergency health insurance, orientation and programming, that's for pre-departure as well as when you arrive in the U.S., and support from our office here in Dublin, as well as the office in the U.S. when you arrive if your application is successful. Um, we have a webinar about the general Fulbright Irish Awards for 2019-2020. So if you haven't watched that already or been to one of our kind of roadshow talks or anything like that, I'd recommend just watching that back because it gives a little bit more detail uh, on tips around, I suppose, essays and things like that. So it might be worth watching. And um, that's on our Fulbright Ireland YouTube channel as well. So for all of um, the Irish Awards, the application deadline is 6th of November 2018. In terms of eligibility for all Fulbright Irish Awards, you must be an Irish citizen or an EU citizen who's lived in the Republic of Ireland for three or more consecutive years. You need to demonstrate academic and personal excellence, um, strong rationale for going to the US, strong leadership skills or potential, an understanding and commitment to the ethos of being a Fulbrighter. So in terms of these qualities, I do go into more detail about those in the general Fulbright Awards webinar, so uh, worth watching that back um, to get a few uh, tips on these. You also need to be willing to comply with the two-year home rule. This two-year home rule is part of your visa, so if your application is successful and you go on a Fulbright Award, whether that's for three months or um, 12 months if you're going for a, a more general um, student award, um, you do need to come back to Ireland afterwards, um, your country of citizenship afterwards, to um, participate in knowledge exchange, to bring that uh, knowledge that you gained over in the US back to Ireland um, and share it with your, your discipline, with your uh, field. Um, this is something that um, I suppose for students who are applying to go and do a full PhD or a master's program, um, they would be staying on to do their two years master's or their five year PhD, um, but afterwards the two year home rule would apply. If you're all specifically looking at the Creative, Muse Creative Ireland um, Museum Fellowships, uh, you'll be going for a shorter amount of time. So in terms of those who aren't eligible, um, you can't have a U.S.-Irish uh, dual citizenship. Um, you can't be a green card holder or currently living in the U.S. And you can't have extensive experience of studying or living in the U.S. Um, if you've done a J-1 or if you've spent a year in the U.S., don't worry about this last point. It's more if you've spent four out of the last five years say, living in the U.S., um, you might be de deemed ineligible. But if that's a worry for you, if it's something um, that applies to you, maybe just reach out to us um, and, and tell us about your particular situation and we can advise you. In terms of the application timeline, um, the award period is now open. The application period is now open. It closes on the 6th of November. Shortlisting then takes place November to December. You'll be called for interview just after Christmas. Um, they will take place the end of January, early February, and then offers are made March to April. Um, if you're successful in your application, you'll be attending a pre-departure orientation in June in Dublin, as well as the award ceremony um, in Dublin. And then the earliest you can go on your uh, award, depending on which um, award you're applying for, would usually be August 2019. 
So the first step in applying is to choose your award category. If you're applying for the Museum Fellowships, you're applying to the Irish Student Awards category. I'm just going to uh, give you a quick overview of the four categories for, with particular emphasis on student awards, but I also want to talk a little bit about um, the Scholar Awards. So the Student Awards are for postgraduate research or degree programs in the US, and the museum fellowships fall under these Student Awards. The Scholar Awards are for academic or professional research or lecturing in the US. The Tech Impact are Scholar Awards as well. Um, they're for shorter term professional research um, involving ICT, the application of ICT across all disciplines. And then the Irish FLTA Awards are to teach the Irish language in the US. So as I said, if you're applying for the museum fellowships, you'll be going through the student awards. So these are for postgraduate Irish EU citizens. Um, the monetary award is a maximum of $35,000. So this $35,000 is, is kind of the annual rate. So if you were going for the full 12 months, which you're uh, able to do on a, on a general student award, um, this is the maximum you'd be getting for those 12 months. So um, the museum fellowships are shorter term awards, so it will be assessed on a stipend for the amount of time you're going um, and the cost of living in the area you're going to. So the student awards are for visiting researchers or degree seeking students, and you need to establish affiliation. Um, or if you were to apply for a master's or degree, a PhD degree course, you need to apply through the usual channels. So usually the student awards are for a minimum of four months and a maximum of 12 months, but we'll go into more detail about the museum fellowships, which are slightly different um, shortly. I also just wanted to touch on these scholar awards um, because if there are any um, professionals who are interested in applying for the museum fellowships, because they're student awards, they are geared at students. If you're a professional who's gone back to study and um, who might be enrolled in a, in a master's uh, or PhD, you can apply through the student awards. But if you are a professional with more than five years experience or with your PhD conferred already, um, you're probably not eligible for the museum fellowships for these specific ones. Now, having said that, you can most certainly apply through a scholar award to go to either of the three museums that we're talking about today. Um, it's just a different application, slightly different to the scholar awards and the student awards. So if this is you, um, if you're a professional who's not enrolled in a course, um, then just reach out to us and, and let us know and we can, we can give you more details on this, okay? Um, with those, again, sorry, just for the scholar awards, it's important to note that you have to establish affiliation as well with your U.S. institution, whether that's one of the three institutions we're talking about today or, or another one of your choice. So for the Irish Student Awards, which you'll be applying to for the Museum Fellowships, you need to firstly register interest. Some of you probably already have at this stage. If you haven't, that's your first uh, port of call, go onto our website, go into the Going to the USA section and into the Student Awards section, scroll over to the How to Apply tab and then register your interest. Um, when you register your interest, our awards managers will send you our Irish guidelines for this year and they'll also send you the link to our online global application system. This is called Embark, so they, the, the gateway usually looks like this. Um, it's really important to have our Irish awards application guidelines and to print these out when you're filling in your um, application online because it's a global application form. So uh, there may be questions about um, language proficiency um, and other things that just don't apply to you as an Irish applicant and our guidelines will clearly um, tell you this step by step, they'll take you through all of the questions. So it's a really a good time saver to just print them out and have them by your side um, when, you're, when you're going through your application. So now for the Fulbright Creative Ireland Museum Fellowship specifically, as I said, they're open to the student category only. There are three awards available for the next, uh, each year for the next two years. Um, there are three institutions, Harry Ransom, uh, the Exploratorium and the Smithsonian that you can apply to. Each of them has specific eligibility criteria. And a major difference, I suppose, between these specific awards 
and the general student awards is that for these awards you must seek a letter of support from your chosen host institution and that has to be included in your completed Fulbright application. So by 6th of November deadline you have to have um, sought out the letter of support from your, your host institution of choice and you have to be able to include a copy of this in your Fulbright application. So you'll have to upload it to your Fulbright application. So um, it's a good idea to get started on that as soon as possible. So in terms of each of these um, these fellowships, there are individual kind of um, rules. So firstly, for the Exploratorium, um, they're looking for research projects that explore innovation, creativity, community engagement, informal education and learning, archival research, teacher training, or experimental um, projects in digital media. So the criteria for the Exploratorium is you must have an undergraduate degree in a relevant field. Um, these are open to current master's students and PhD students in progress, but not awarded. Um, you need to, firstly, if you're applying for these um, the fellowship to the Exploratorium, you need to review the Exploratorium's activities on their website. And then you will identify the potential areas of research. Um, so you'll need to have a, a good look at the Exploratorium and have a think about what project you want to work on, how this fits in with the research you're, you're doing at the moment or your proposal. Um, and, you know, if you can think about who you want to work with. Um, if you don't know who it is that you, you'd be working with or who would be your advisor while you're there, you can contact um, the Exploratorium at this email here um, and she will introduce you um, to a relevant member of staff. So if you contact um, the email that you see here on the screen um, with an outline of your project, you don't have to send your entire project statement um, or in great detail, you just have to outline why it is you think you're a good match for the Exploratorium, why it is your um, research proposal is a good match. So, you know, give them as much information as you can, but I wouldn't spend, you know, a, too much time on it at this stage. The, the more, most important thing is to reach out and say, okay, this is what I have in mind. Do you think this would be a good match? And then if they come back to you with questions, you can answer them. Um, but it's a good idea to reach out as soon as possible um, and let them know that you're looking for a letter of support ultimately from them for your Fulbright application. So it's important when you reach out to them, obviously, to mention that you're also applying to the Fulbright Commission for a Fulbright Award so they know that it's part of this specific museum fellowship. Okay. Then for the Harry Ransom Centre, um, they're seeking projects that engage substantively with the centre's collections, that demonstrate commitment to innovation and creativity, and that include plans for scholarly and community engagement. So the eligibility criteria here is that preference will be given to current PhD students in progress but not awarded. Um, this is a student award, so it's not open to postdoctoral academics. Um, they have a preferred award period, and this is three consecutive months from September to December 2019 or from January to May 2020. Um, if I recall correctly, they, they can take into consideration um, projects that are slightly outside of, of these um, timelines, but again, just something you might want to flag with them when you're reaching out to them. So again, here's a email address up on your screen um, for contacting the Harry Ransom Centre with an outline of your project. And then again, um, this contact will be able to facilitate introductions to relevant staff members at the centre. So um, for the Harry Ransom Centre, they have also set a deadline of requests for letters of, of support, and that's 20th of October. So if you're planning to apply to the Harry Ransom Center for a fellowship, um, I would get going on that request for letter of support as soon as possible. If you haven't reached out to them yet, don't worry. Um, just do get in touch um, in the next day or two with a, a, an outline of your project, as I say, you know, whether that's 
bullet points or however much detail you have ready. Um, but just to, to put the feelers out, make sure it's a good fit, um, and then flag with them, I suppose, that you'll be looking for a potential advisor to give you a letter of support. And of course, this letter of support is just to include in your Fulbright application, they may give letters of support to more than one candidate for each institution. Um, now, and for the fellowship to the Smithsonian, um, they're seeking research projects that dem demonstrate a commitment to innovation and creativity, substantive community engagement, and potential to harness the transformative potential of arts, culture, creativity, scientific inquiry, and heritage preservation through research collaborations. So the criteria for the Smithsonian Fellowship is a primary degree in arts, culture, science, or relative discipline relevant discipline and diverse fields are welcome here um, they were quite clear that it's not just for um, creative research um, scientific they, they, I mean the Smithsonian is quite large there's lots of different um, site locations so there's a lot um, of different and diverse research that could be um, undertaken in, in these institutions and this again is a student award it's not open to postdoctoral academics if you want to apply for this Smithsonian Fellowship, you need to review the uh, SOARS guide. Um, this is the link for that guide is in the flyer which we have on our website. So if you go into the Student Award um, category on, on Fulbright.ie, um, you'll see the, the various flyers for these fellowships. And if you click in, it, there's a link there for that SOARS guide. Um, and you could identify potential advisors there at any Smithsonian location. So we do say um, the Smithsonian DC, which you might have a base there, or you might be um, connecting through the DC location, but they are open to um, proposals for other locations of Smithsonian as well. Um, you need to contact prospective advisors and request a letter of recommendation, which again needs to be included in your Fulbright application. So you should be able to identify um, prospective advisors through that guide, but if you do have any trouble, let us know, and we can put you in touch with our contact in the Smithsonian, um, and she may be able to um, you know, reach out to people for you. They're very busy, so if you can um, you know, identify people through the guide, please contact them, um, let us know, and we can try and um, make arrangements. Um, and then, of course, you need to submit your application to Fulbright. And if you're selected for this specific Smithsonian Fellowship, you'll also need to submit the same materials to them, to their solar system, OK? Now, uh, just to give you an idea of um, who have who, who are, who've gone on these fellowships, so last year was the first year um, that we were opening applications for these fellowships. And this year, um, we have two successful candidates. So David Stone from UCD is um, going off um, on a Creative Ireland Museum Fellowship to the Smithsonian. He's an archaeology student. He's a, a PhD student. Um, and he is doing extremely interesting work over there. Um, he has not gone on his fellowship yet. Um, but if you would like to reach out to him um, about the application process, um, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to help anyone um, if, you, if you need advice on that. And then Sally McHugh is our second uh, fellow for this year. She's a PhD student at NUIG, um, and she's going to the Exploratorium. We're recording again. Um, so um, Sally, Sally yes, is in NUIG, um, and her project is quite different to David. So um, if you want to reach out to her, um, I think she is either in the States at the moment or um, due to go very soon. So she may have um, some practical experience uh, to, to help uh, advise you on, as well as her application um, advice. So in terms of planning your application, um, the most important parts for you if you're applying to one of these fellowships is firstly to complete the registration form for Fulbright on our website. Then research 
the activities and collections at your host institution of choice. Okay, so have a look at those flyers on the website for the Smithsonian Exploratorium and Harry Ransom Center and make sure um, you're reaching out to the relevant contacts, um, sending them your project proposals, um, so you're contacting the host institution and then requesting a letter of invitation. Okay, so again, just to stress that letter of invitation is very important um, that you include it in your Fulbright application. Again, if you have any issues, um, if they don't get back to you in time, anything like that, just flag that with our awards managers here in the Fulbright Commission and we'll be able to help you. Um, I would say that, um, you know, to reach out to us and, and Getting for those people who need to write um, letters of support for you. Um, so it's no harm uh, reaching out to us as soon as possible. And then, of course, you need to complete your Fulbright application. And as I mentioned, we have another webinar um, that's a little bit longer that goes into kind of detail about um, filling out your Fulbright application and some tips there as well. I would say um, for your Fulbright application, um, some of the things as well, we have three weeks from today, I think, till the deadline um, for the Fulbright uh, application form. So, things struggle in the last week to get these together because the way it works is um, you need to start your application online, your Fulbright application, then in the reference in the referee section, you would submit uh, the email and the other details, contact details for your referees. They will then receive notification and guidelines on how to act as a referee for you. But it is your responsibility to follow up with those referees to say, um, you know, did you get this? Make sure it didn't go into their spam box in their email. Um, and then also to just follow up with them and make sure they've submitted these references because they submit them directly to the Embark online system. So you need to follow up with them and make sure they've submitted them by 6th of November because it's, that's a hard deadline for references as well. So the earlier you get started on that, the easier it will be for you in the last few days. Um, similarly, if you need um, transcripts, you don't need to have original transcripts, but if you haven't had to request them before, you do need to have um, digital copies of the transcripts rather than your you know, actual degree or anything like that, the transcripts from your undergrad um, when you're applying for a student award usually. Um, so that they're the kind of basics. Um, we have time for questions. Um, if anyone does have a question, I can recommend uh, just typing into the messenger box uh, on the screen. It should be in the middle, top middle of your screen. Um, otherwise, um, I would recommend also talking to a Fulbright Campus ambassador if you are based on a um, campus around Ireland. We have 19 ambassadors and they're always kind of really helpful and willing to advise any um, students and scholars um, to, to guide them through varying degrees depending on how much time they have, um, but they're always really open to meeting you and giving Similarly, you can talk to any of our Fulbright alumni. So if you go onto our website, fulbright.ie, go into the alumni section, um, and you can do a search through alumni for the last six to seven years. Um, and if there's any of our alum, whether they're US-based or Irish-based, um, and they've either you know, come from a home institution, if they're US awardees that you're interested in going to or interested in knowing more about, um, or vice versa if they're an Irish awardee who's gone out to the US before and is from a similar field to you or gone to an institution that you're interested in, um, it's worth chatting to them um, because they're always really friendly and willing to help um, because they've been through this process before so they know it can be a little bit nerve-wracking sometimes but they, they all got through it and, and, and they got the scholarship so it's great to get a little bit of advice from them. Um, now, just I have one question coming in. 
Um, as somebody said, the possible hosting institution, what should be included on their support letter? Literally, their support letter, it doesn't have to be too formal. It just has to say that they think your project proposal is relevant and that they'd be happy to host you. So from your point of view, I suppose it might be a good idea um, depending on your needs. So if you need an office space, if you need you know, if you're going over to do something scientific or um, related to artistic practice even, and you need a space to carry out that work, I would advise putting that in your um, request for a letter of support. Um, it's not, those details can be ironed out later um, once you have your, your basic letter of support from them, but for yourselves, you know, it, it's nice to know that what you need will be available and that there'll be a point of contact over there that will be there during your award as well um, that can support you and introduce you to the people you need to meet um, when you're over there as well as give you access to, you know, if you need access, access to archives or collections, things like that. So it's, it's practical things. They want to know that your um, proposal is a good fit for them that you've looked at their activities and their collections and that you know exactly what you're doing and you have strong rationale for going to their institution specifically. Um, you know, and if you if you have thought about the outcomes, which it's always a very good idea to include in your Fulbright application at least, if you've thought about them, you know, include them. But I am aware that, you know, some of you might only be starting um, in, in that process uh, recently. So, giving an outline is better than nothing at this stage, if you get me. Um, and then, as I say, they will ask for more information if they need it, okay? Um, another question. Just wanted to check how long the research object essay and personal statement would be. So, for this is for your Fulbright application. You need to do your um, research uh, proposal and your personal statement. In the Irish guidelines that you receive from our awards managers, there's an outline of how long those should be. Um, and if you if you look through, just kind of go through it with a fine tooth comb and all of those things, you know, right down to headings and things like that. It's just a good idea to go through those guidelines really carefully. Um, and see, and if you do have any further questions, let us know. But there's a lot of content in there. Um, similarly with our FAQs on our website as well, but most of the information that's in our FAQs on the website will be in your student guidelines too. Is there any other questions about the museum fellowships? Is there anyone who has any questions about other awards as well even um, that you're thinking about applying for? Well, if you do, um, we're always here. Our awards manager email is awards at fulbright.ie. Um, these will be your main point of contact during the application period. Uh, we have two awards managers. In the host institution. So um, I would say as well with that, um, I never said before that to reach out to them as soon as possible if you haven't already. Um, but don't be afraid of cold calling or emailing, you know, introducing yourself. That's what most Fulbright awardees would be doing, to be honest, our Fulbright um, applicants. Um, you know, they, they'd be sending off an email. Um, including, you know, that you're applying for a Fulbright award is going to be helpful because in the U.S., even more so than here in Ireland, um, Fulbright is a very well-known um, scholarship, very well-known name, um, and they'll know exactly what channels you're coming through. So that's your introduction, you know, so um, don't be afraid to reach out to people. And if, you know, you have a number of people you'd be interested in working with, there's no harm in reaching out to a few, um, you know, and you can let them know that you've done that. Um, but just to ensure that there's somebody who comes back to you. And as I say, if nobody does come back to you from the host institution, Within a day or two, please do reach out to us um, because we, we want to make sure, especially for the likes of the, I think it's the Harry Ransom Centre that has that tight deadline of 20th of October, we want to make sure um, you get in there in time. Okay. Um, so, 
I think that's all. I don't think we have any more questions, but if you do have specific questions, give us an email, um, give us a ring. Uh, we're always here to help. Uh, and as I say, those um, other uh, webinars, the general uh, awards webinar on our, our YouTube channel might offer a little bit more insight into the um, overall application process. Okay, so if you have any uh, questions, just let us know by email. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for joining. Um, and best of luck in all of your applications. Okay, good evening, see you.